Hi, I'm Narelle Todd from Get My Book Out There. Hi, I'm Essie Smith. (laughs) (laughs) And we wanted to have a chat today about diversity because we find this topic quite um, interesting. And we wanted to look at diversity in romance writing in particular. How do you authentically represent different cultures and experiences? And I will pose that question to Susan because obviously you're the writer here. I guess, well, what's your take on diversity? How do you do that in your writing? And the thing that I'm particularly interested in, as you're obviously a white woman of a certain age, how do you then write about anybody really who's not a white woman of a certain age? Because if you're writing about a younger woman in their 20s, very different lived experience to your experience. You know, throw in some people of colour, throw in, let's say, people from other countries. You know, so how do you mash it all together? How do you get it so that it's right? And it's, I guess, not a facsimile of a different culture or someone else's um, experience as a different person. Explain all of that to me. (laughs) That's an awful lot loaded into one question. (laughs) (laughs) It was a big one. But it is, but it's a really super cool question. Because it does take a lot. You know, I am a white woman of a certain age. But what's really cool is my life hasn't been just about me. And one of the, another cool part is as an author, you can also basically take yourself out of who you are as a person and put somebody else in there. And so when I'm writing a story... What I do for me, diversity, let me unload that one first. Diversity is so important because it makes the story richer. You give a true view of not only what this world would look like, but what all worlds would look like. Because if you really look at nature, whether you're a human child or a bear cub, you like to play. I remember us being at Devil's Tower and there was a a doe with two fawns and there was the one fawn who was calm and stayed right next to mommy. Then you had the other one that was totally manic running all over the place and mom just walked off without it and it's doing its thing playing and you're thinking, oh, I know a kid like that or I was that kid. And then it stops and looks around and it can't find mom and you can see that panic mode. And it's like hollering and running and here, there, and the other until it sees mom. And then it's like, oh, thank you, thank you. And mom's just looking at it like, mm-hmm. this is what happens when you don't listen. It doesn't matter whether you're human or, like I said, all creatures have a certain core that is the same. You want to pull out as a writer. So when I'm looking at diversity, it's not only one specific color or one specific just for humans it could also be for dragon shifters or cat shifters or alien warriors who are coming that you meet so they're all going to have these type of personalities that i find so fascinating that i want to capture them and i want to bring them in when you look at it it didn't matter that it was a doe and a fawn or a bear and a bear cub or an old white woman <laughs> <laughs> you're you're pulling it it's that's just an outer shell so i'm pulling what's in that shell out and trying to explore what it would be like now there are different cultures that i have to look at so for example my girls from the street series i deal with a make believe middle east country yes there's been from a an american old white woman perspective, there's been a lot of negative connotations. But there's also been, you know, throughout history, a lot of romanticism to that. But in today's society, we know that it doesn't matter where you're at, you're going to have the good and the bad. And so what I try and do is I try to create my own Wakanda, if you want to call it that, or my own mythical country where I pull the best of all the characteristics. Yes, I've got my bad guys and they do bad things, but they do bad things no matter where you're at. So I try to pull that 
with respect to that culture, but they all want the same thing. They want a family. They want happiness. They want to know that they're safe and secure and what's best for those that they love. The outside is important to bring into that story to show that we're all still the same on the inside. And that's where I focus. As far as how do I get my old lady mind set to a 20 year old? (laughs) I don't look in the mirror. You know how they always say that in your mind, you're always like 16 or you're always like 20. Yes, that's very true. I, I think I'm pulled from that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I can put myself at that point in my life. And it helps the fact that I have kids, that um, I have grandson, you know, who's in his late teens, going to be, well, he's 19, he'll be almost 20. So I have him to pull from. And I watch how he interacts with his friends and the things that he does. And then I have my own kids who are in their 30s and their 40s. So I'm able to pull from that. And having been a school teacher, of course, I'm from kindergarten all the way through college level, I've had years and years and years of experience with kids and people of all different ages. I pull from all of that life experience and I don't look in the mirror then. <laughs> And I put them into me, and that's the age I am for that character that I'm writing. I know it sounds kind of weird, but it works. <laughs> Is there any culture or any, uh, say, nationality or any age group or any gender that you wouldn't write about that you don't think you could um, step into? I don't really think so. I haven't found any yet. I grew up as an Air Force brat, so I grew up, you know, some on the base and with that diversity. And if you were to look at my ancestry tree, you would see I've got like a long list of places that my family originally came from. The one thing that I don't want to do is I remember when I wrote The Warrior's Whisper, it was Mm -hmm. about a Native American tribe. And I have... Not very much, but I have some Native American in me. And I wanted to do it justice, but I I do the same thing with any culture that I'm going to write about. I try to go and I try to research as best I can that culture to make sure that I represent them in a positive light. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, I'm going to have bad guys that are going to do bad things, but we have that and no matter what culture you're in again. Yes. So I try to be respectful. I guess that's a big thing. I try to be very, very respectful. You know, if I'm writing, say a character who is not white, again, the warrior's whisper, he was a native American. When I was doing the research, I also pulled from the tales that I grew up with being told and then when I'm writing about for an example say a young black man which I did when I was writing Tyrell and Mm -hmm. the Breaking Free series I think I captured him very very well but again I have an edge or uh, an inside in that my my grandchildren are biracial and I was at in the school system. So I was in the high school system setting with all of these kids. And I did a lot with kids from different, from India, from Pakistan, from Jordan, from South America. I had a a little girl that came into my classroom and all she spoke was, she was from Brazil and only spoke Portuguese. So, you know, the first thing I did was I had all of the instructions that I did for the day. I went and translated them into Portuguese. And you could just see her eyes light up that I was doing that to help her so that she would fit in. It's taking that time 
to understand and respect. And I think as an author, we have a specific duty to do that. I know it's people say, oh, it's just romance. So it's a billion dollar a year business. It really does impact the world. What do you say to the school of thought out there that, you know, I've seen this in, in several author groups, with the suggestion that you should not write outside of your own lived experience? If you're going to do that, how are you going to grow? How are you going to learn? How are you going to develop a better understanding? It's like putting yourself in a bubble and saying, I can only write this because I don't want to reach outside my bubble. I think it's shortchanging yourself and nothing else. Write something, even if you don't publish it, to help push yourself outside of that limit. If I were to do that, could you imagine if I did not write outside of that bubble, I would never have written a shapeshifter, paranormal, or alien <laughs> yes. story because I haven't met any of them. Yeah, yeah. So what you're doing is is you're creating that bubble and the only one that you're hurting is really yourself. Yeah, well, and if you, say, took it outside the romance or let's say romantic suspense, not too many authors have served in the military. Yeah, or, or um, killed somebody so that they, for them to, yeah. in, order, in order for them to write about. <laughs> if, you know, if you killers really who want go to apply people. that. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, honestly, look at it. If you were to apply that rule and really mean it, yeah. what are you going to write about? What's happening with your neighbor next door? What's happening at work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of material out there, but still, it's going to be kind of yeah. boring. <laughs> And I think, as you say, if you do your research and you pay attention to what's going on around you and the people around you, and you treat everyone with respect, I think that's the key. And not getting caught up in stereotypes. Mm -hmm. I think we have, that would be the thing that I would say. When Sometimes when you're reading, like when I'm reading some fiction And I'm like going, oh, you know who the bad guy is just because you know the stereotype of who the bad guy is going to be. And you say, oh, yeah, Yeah, I was right. I was going, you know, man, you know, as you say, good and bad people come in all shapes, colours, sizes, ages, everything. So it's really good to mix it up just from that perspective to keep things fresh. Exactly. I had some reservations when I was writing about cornering Carmen, there was a drug cartel, but mm-hmm. they were in that region. And this is a region that is, does have this kind of stuff. But I don't leave my bad guys just to Colombia cartels. Then I've got the American bad guys. And I've got my Middle Eastern bad guys were mixed with my American bad guys. Mm-hmm. And yeah. when I read like Touching Moon, I know like a lot of current events or situations in the world can suddenly make what you would think characters go out of favor. So in Touching Rune, I have two Russian businessmen, but not all Russians are the same. You know, they're not all bad guys, just like not all Americans are bad guys or Hawaiian, you know, well, Hawaiians are Americans to see um, and capture the defiance. I did the situation where I had, you know, it was, again, a mixture of of good guys and bad guys from different nationalities. Mm. Mm. But I remember one of the protagonists, I want to write his story, by the way, because he's one of those, oh, my God, great, great. You don't know if he's good or bad. And he's an Asian. But then I've also got the CIA agent and the Seven Kingdoms and from the Monsters Caress, who is an Asian character. And he was very respectful. I did a lot of research on him and his culture. You know, he's Japanese, making sure that, especially his his communication with his grandfather, there were some culture clashes because his grandfather and grandmother had been from the, the Japanese culture where their son, who was raised an American, was having that conflict with his past culture. And then you have the grandson. So it shows real world, real life situations Yeah, Yeah. that people deal with. And I think that 
that's what makes the stories realistic. From time to time, um, gender baddies, as in, you know, some female baddies. So I think that's always good because there's certainly good and bad. Oh, I had a really good one. And yeah, yeah, in the Geek and the Sheep, I had a really good one. And I, I had actually readers say, oh, I hated her, which was funny because my editor goes, oh, my God, I love her. Are you going to read? You know, I'm really good at rehabbing the bad guys. Yeah. And she's like, are you going to rehab her? And I'm like, no, she was like so bad. She she couldn't be rehabbed. Yes. But, no redemption you know, for her. <laughs> yeah. And, and so you're looking at these characters that that diversity where... I have my gay couple. Oh my God, John Paul and Luke are hilarious. Mm-hmm. I absolutely adore them. And they are like so many people. I have to say, I have a, I have a close friend who who's gay. And just watching, you know, her and her partner and stuff. And I've known her for, gosh, close to 40 years now. Her favorite thing was to give up my kids' toolbox. <laughs> And then she'd give my toolbox and then every year she would add a tool to it. So they were always going down to her house to help work and build on stuff. So it, it's really cool having just such a rich, my friend was the one that helped me with break, with my Breaking Free series because she builds sailboats. So she was like telling me, oh, you got a safety, safety, safety. So if you see a lot of safety stuff, it's because she said, I'd better put that in the book. <laughs> but it's it's doing the research. It's taking the time to to look and to open your mind and your heart, and that's what romance to me is all about. And writing a good story is being able to open your heart. Yeah. So, what would be just to finish finish off the conversation? What would be say your top three or or more tips around authentically representing diversity? Open your mind and heart and know that they are just like everyone else. They want family and friendship, love. Do your research. If you are writing about a specific culture, when I was writing about the Warrior's Whisper, I did a lot of research because I wanted to be very, very respectful Mm -hmm. of the Native American tribe that I was writing about. Think outside the box. Don't be afraid to burst out of your bubble. And don't think just because you're an old white woman that you don't have the experiences to write young people or even children. People love my dragling stories and they're dragon shifting kids, you know, so that go on great adventures. If you're going to write about those different cultures, try not to get sucked into that mindset like you said. Reading about, oh, you you automatically knew who the bad guy was going to be because they had stereotyped him. Mm -hmm. Don't stereotype. In fact, you may have that character break out of that stereotype and end up making them the good guy. Yeah. Yeah. That will catch readers' attention and it will stick with them. Yeah. For a reader, it must just be a wonderful feeling to be able to read characters that look like them or sound like them or represent them so i would think that there's there would be a fair amount of grace given anyway if you were representing somebody outside of your own culture and you were doing it respectfully i think people would probably give you a bit of a a pass if it wasn't quite up to speed i think readers are still just so keen to see the world represented in our fiction that i I think they'd be okay with it and I've seen that. There's been, especially in my earlier books, there may be something that I got wrong. Like I did not know that in Russia that they celebrate Christmas at a different time of year than oh, we yes. do. But I had enough characters from the person that was actually throwing the party was actually from the UK. So it was like, okay, they're selling a braiding it because mm. that was her personal and this is something I, I learned a little too late that I wish I'd learned earlier. I like to sprinkle in their language. And of course, I don't speak some of these different languages, like any of them except English. One of the things, you know, I try to use Google Translate, but it doesn't always work. And 
oftentimes one word will actually mean something else, even though I do a lot of research and I yeah. go to like the native language for dictionaries for those languages, I still get it wrong. So one of the things I've learned is you can go to Fiverr and for, you know, 10, 15 bucks, you can put all of those phrases in English and say, I need these translated to Arabic or to Russian or whatever. And you can hire somebody that yeah. that is their native language and they will translate it for you. So not only are you getting it right in your book for a very small amount. Um, another key thing is when you have them do it, have them record the phrases as well. Mm -hmm. So that when you give it to your narrator, your narrator can listen and then have a reference as to how the words should be pronounced. Yeah. Great idea. So, I mean, this is just a, a really cool tip. So you'll have these phrases, English, that language, and the audio for it. You can use it. And it comes off as more authentic. And I found that readers have told me that they like having that sprinkled in through the story because it really does make them feel like they are there, yes, that they're part of yeah. that world. And it shows more say, respect for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Speaking of language as an Australian, I often have a great amount of joy when I read people who aren't Australian and they're writing as though they are Australian or they write Australian characters. And I think for many, the the idea of Crocodile Dundee as the ultimate Australian, it, it features quite heavily, uh, particularly in a certain age group. And um, the number of times I've had to explain that Crocodile Dundee was actually written for the American market. And it's even almost like though, a satire. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, you know, Mick, Mick Dundee, um, he obviously speaks with a very broad Australian accent. But, you know, some of the words that he has in there, I think there was a fair amount of taking the mickey out of, um, <laughs> out of particularly the American market. But then you see in people who are writing and they'll, like, for some reason they seem to think Sheila is an Australian name for a woman. It might have been in my grandparents' day, but it hasn't been for, for ages. So stuff like that really, I think, just you know, get a dictionary. And I actually did this for a writer friend. Um, when she was writing an Australian character, I gave her an, a, an Australian to American dictionary. And I just said, just you know, follow this and then ask. So definitely check in with somebody from particularly if you're writing another culture because there will be certain things that we think because we've seen it so much on TV or in the movies, we think that's actually what it is where it's really a marketing, well, in the case of Crocodile Dundee, that was a marketing thing to make it big in the US. And, yeah. um, you know, and then Paul Hogan, who played that character, did a really great advertisement then in America to get Americans to come and visit Australia. And it was put another shrimp on the Barbie. Beautiful, beautiful people would come over from America and go, oh, you know, put another shrimp on the Barbie and be like, well, actually, we call them a prawn, <laughs> not a shrimp. <laughs> but Paul Hogan couldn't say that in the ad because nobody in America would understand what a prawn was. But Well, and it doesn't have that same ring, you know, no. for marketing. Yeah, put another prawn on the barbie, mate. Yeah, it's not quite the same at all. And um, so I think that's just a, another example of how we think we know another mm -hmm. culture or another thing just from what we've seen and heard, whereas the potential could be that it's actually written for your culture so that you can understand and put it in context as opposed to anything else. So that's just something to watch out for just in case. Yeah, don't take one movie no. as your total research. <laughs> no, no. And, yeah, definitely check in with somebody. If anybody wants anything to know about Australia, feel free. Send me, a, send me an email. When I was writing some of the stuff, like I was writing Garmin's Jane Doe, I cannot tell you how many quantum physics from Stephen Hawkins to Neil deGrasse Tyson that I was like trying to wrap my head around. It was like taking yeah. a, a cliff notes of a class, a novice class for it, <laughs> because mm -hmm. trying to wrap my head around all of that, going to NASA and, and seeing what the scientists said about it. But I spent literally 
months drawing and writing and trying to make what was going to happen as realistic as possible without going too far over. Because a lot of people, yeah. oh, it's just a romance. It was more than just a romance. It's an action. It's adventure. It's sci-fi. It's and it's suspense and it's got humor and it's, it's romance. But it's about all of this. Mm. And that's another thing that really bothers me is when people stereotype a character, they don't take into account how many people they're thinking, oh, it's just a romance. How many people could you be hurting? Yes. You know, if if I were to take one of my, my black characters, I'm doing a disservice because I'm putting this image in your hand, your head, that you can't trust people of a certain skin color. Yes. And if I get that stuck in your head, my grandson is going to be affected by that. Yeah. But I think one of the characters that I really, really love and the stories that I've written that I really love are um, Mattis's falling star. Mm -hmm. And you've got two characters that look completely different from a human, but guess what? It is a beautiful action filled romance. Yes. And you get so lost in it that you forget that they're not human shaped. So it shows that you can have this love and and these great stories don't have to have just human characters. Yeah. They're two people from another planet that fall in love. And I think that's a beautiful moment there just to segue back into I think what wraps up this whole discussion, and that's the respect. Yes. Respect. That's respect. I guess that's the key. That is the key. Yeah. Yes. We'd all be in a in a much better world, I think, if we respected each other more. Definitely. Okay. (laughs) Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Please pop them in the comments. Uh, Send us an email. Um, Diversity. How do you go with writing it? What things do you take into account? Do you write diverse characters or do you think that that's not something that you can do and do it well? So anyway, let us know. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. And also from a reader's perspective, do you like reading more diverse characters and more diverse worlds? I would love to know that as an author. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Do you want more of that? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Radio. Hit us. Let us know. See ya. Bye. See ya. Bye.